Whoa, CeraVe versus Cetaphil moisturizer with SPF battle. Let's jump into it. So we got a video today, guys. Cetaphil versus CeraVe looking at their facial moisturizers with SPF. Let's see which one is better, which one has a better texture. A lot of my patients come into clinic asking which one they should get, which one works better for their skin type. So let's talk about that. I'm Dr. Daniel Sugai. I'm a board certified dermatologist in the Seattle area. I practice medical, surgical, and cosmetic dermatology. So I'm seeing over 100 patients a week, and I'm also doing social media and giving skincare and dermatology education worldwide so we can make good decisions with our hard-earned money. So you're walking down the skincare aisle at the drugstore and you see both the Cetaphil Daily Oil Free Facial Moisturizer with SPF 35 and you also see the CeraVe AM Facial Moisturizing Lotion SPF 30 and you're like, which one do I pick up? You know, like they both look very similar. Uh, they're both three fluid ounces with very similar pricing. Usually Cetaphil and CeraVe products are less than 20 bucks and a little goes a long way. It really can last you a while. When it comes to these facial moisturizers with SPF, you want to use at least a quarter teaspoon amount to cover your face and get that SPF 30 or SPF 35. The other one that I compared recently on another YouTube video is the Ultra Light CeraVe Moisturizing Lotion, which I think is like the gold standard for facial moisturizers with SPF because it's so lightweight. But let's see how the texture compares to Cetaphil's Daily Oil-Free Facial Moisturizer. We've talked about the critiques behind the AM because it's quite thick. It has zinc oxide, plus it has chemical UV filters. It has one, two, three, four chemical UV filters. So this has four chemical UV filters. This one has zinc plus four chemical UV filters. And then we can show the texture of this one here, which has the four chemical UV filters. Okay, let's jump into your skincare complaints. If I have a patient here with acne and they're on acne medications, their skin's quite dry and they don't mind having a thicker moisturizer with SPF, I'd say the AM is a great option for them. Um, this has niacinamide, which as you guys know, is a great ingredient that we like. I don't care for it as a dedicated niacinamide serum when it's 10% or more. That can be quite irritating for the skin. I like it mixed into my products. And this one here has not only the ceramides, which makes CeraVe CeraVe, you have three essential ceramides, but you also have niacinamide and hyaluronic acid. And the niacinamide is just great for my patients with oily skin, with acne, because it helps regulate sebum production. So it doesn't make as much oil feeding the bacteria that is causing your acne. Diacinamide is a great ingredient. Also, if you have dark spots, it helps reduce dark spots by brightening the skin. And so, nice to have that. The reason why I bring this one up and why it's still relevant is that if you don't have those issues and you have, say, more mature skin and you're looking more at texture, you want something that's more of a nice sensorial experience, you don't want to put a zinc oxide-based sunscreen on your face, the ultralight comes into play. The only thing is that this one does not have the niacinamide. It has the ceramides and hyaluronic acid, so it's hydrating with the hyaluronic acid, and the ceramides help repair the skin barrier, but no niacinamide. So if you want texture, lightweight, this one wins. If you want niacinamide, this one wins. But the big question is, does Cetaphil become relevant, and does that compete texture-wise with even this one? Because this one has panthenol or vitamin B5, niacinamide, vitamin B3, and glycerin, which is a hydrator. So a lot of their rebranded products now have those three great ingredients that I love. So let's talk about this one. Can this one replace even the AM because of texture? Because this also has niacinamide, right? So also could be great for my patients with acne. A lot of my younger patients have gravitated to CeraVe because they've put a lot of money in marketing and um, did a really funny Super Bowl com commercial uh, with Michael Sarah this past year. So I feel like, you know, where they, um, my younger patients are gravitating to CeraVe, but I also wanted to highlight Cetaphil because I think they make some awesome products for those with sensitive skin especially. So let me show you the texture of this guy here. Comes out thick, very different from the Ultralight, which I'll show you here. So you got the Ultralight CeraVe without the niacinamide, and you got Cetaphil here with the glycerin, niacinamide, and panthenol. Not bad, but this one, much lighter weight. After a couple swipes, you can see this is starting to disappear. So let me put some of this on my face. Blends in nice, rubs in well. Not much of a white cast there, so that's nice. That goes on very nice. Not Doesn't feel thick. I have a feeling this might be better than the CeraVe AM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. So let's put some on my hand. 
That's the Cetaphil. Now let's try to put some of the AM on the back of my hand. So you got the AM CeraVe, Cetaphil up above. CeraVe, that's that thicker zinc oxide look there with the four chemical UV filters. And now you got the Cetaphil, much more of a lighter weight lotion. Cetaphil, CeraVe. So I have a feeling the CeraVe is gonna be a little bit thicker and you gotta, it's gonna require a little bit more muscle or elbow grease to get that blended in. Yeah. So I'm putting it on the other side of the face here. Lee is slight, a slight white cast, unless I keep rubbing it in. And even after I rubbed it in, you can still see there's a little bit more of a white cast look on this side. So as a hybrid sunscreen or moisturizer with SPF, you expect a little bit better sophisticated texture. The ultralight, again, is, is much more of a better sensorial experience than the Cetaphil. Doesn't have that niacinamide in it. So if CeraVe could throw some niacinamide in it, in this, this could be kind of a, a triple threat there. You got the texture, you got the price, and you got the, the niacinamide. This one needs some work, but I'd say this SPF 35 beats the SPF 30 product just because texture-wise, this is a little better. It doesn't have as much of a white cast when I blend it in. It feels less um, heavy than the AM, so I'd say that one wins. SPF 30 to SPF 35, not a big difference. You don't have to go by, oh, that's superior just based on the sun protection factor. No, SPF 30 to SPF 40 is a very small amount of difference. And when you look at that SPF chart, uh, it's just very small percentages that we're looking at. Though, although I do say if you have an SPF 70 versus SPF 30, there could be a difference if you underestimate how much sunscreen you apply. So if you apply too little of your SPF 70, maybe it'll be SPF 40 you have on your face. If you underestimate your SPF 30 or SPF 35 though, having SPF 15 to 20 on your face, which is not good, right? That's not enough coverage we want daily. We wanna go for SPF 30 and above. I don't know why skincare brands are still making uh, below SPF 30 uh, products. I'd say you can find a nice lightweight moisturizer with SPF. That's SPF 30 and above and just stick with those, okay? And if you are doing water resistant or if you're doing water play or workouts, you wanna go with a dedicated water resistant sunscreen and not one of these facial moisturizers with SPF. So I just wanted to make that a point. So hope you like this video. Hope this video was helpful. So if you have acne, um, acne prone skin, oily skin, Go with one of these, but I'd say this one wins based on texture. Price-wise, both affordable. I still I still like this product. It's just this one texture-wise a little better. Um, if you are into lightweight texture, you want something that's very lightweight, this one is the best in terms of being ultra lightweight. And that lives up to its name. Okay, so please hit the like button. Please share with your friends who are into skincare. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. We're almost to 600,000 friends here on the channel. And I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace.